Hello everybody, welcome to the second part of our truck tutorial. In the first part we have made the geometric setup, meaning we have adjusted the model to the simulation containers. In this part we will make some settings that are required to make the car drive and behave like a truck. We start with the dynamics section. There we can set the weight of the car and it's important to increase the value to get a heavy truck rather than a lightweight sports car. The drag coefficient of the aerodynamics section should be increased because we have a very boxy shape. The brake torque should be adjusted to the drive torque. We'll get back later here. So next the powertrain. We have a rear wheel drive so we can leave this selection as it is. And the engine power is defined by a torque curve. And we find some information on the constructor's website. On the performance tab we find a torque curve here. And the values are in pound per feet, LBFT, so we have to convert the values to Newton meters. So we take the maximum value and convert it, and it says 2500. We take this uh, here as a maximum torque. Now let's take a look at the engine speed range. And this diagram goes from 900 to 2100. So I take 2500, 2500 as a maximum value. So the next is to adjust the peak points. So at which engine speed maximum torque is provided and so we set this two points to this range it is from 2100 to 2500 okay since our curve starts from zero I adjust the curve here manually a bit. Important are these two points here, the maximum output. Now the transmission. Trucks have many gears. So I looked on the internet and found this gear ratio table for a 10 speed transmission. So I set the number of gears to 10 and take the values on the, from the table. The shifting points depend directly on the torque curve, so the gear should always be shifted if the engine speed leaves this optimal range where we have the maximum output. So I set the value to shift down to 1100 and the uh, gear should be shifted up at 1600. I think it's better to set it a bit lower. Next is the chassis. I couldn't find any exact values for the springs and dampers of this car. Since it's quite heavy, I make the springs a bit stiffer. I leave the damper rate as it is for now. The anti-roll bar springs reduce the rolling of the car when cornering. 
In most cases you have to play around with all these parameters to get the driving behavior you want. As almost any truck, this car has no camber. The caster angle is also zero. The steering lock is the maximum steering angle and the maximum steering rate gives the speed of cornering, meaning how fast the steering wheel can be turned. The value is in degrees per second. Okay, let me show you what the caster angle stuff is. Uh, here you can see the steering axis of the front wheels and maybe you can see it better from the side view the axis is upright so the caster angle is zero now the car is ready for a first test drive first we need a driving route On the driving control panel we create the driving routes and they appear here in an object group and each route is a spline with a special tag. The default spline I will extend it by some points. Okay, that's enough. Let me round the corners. I want the car to drive straight on first, so I adjust this tangent here a bit. So the car needs to know how fast it should drive. So you have to add some speed points. You can set the speed in KPH and set the position on the spline. And the car will try to achieve the given speed when it reaches those points. Now we need some more frames as well. And then we can start the animation. Okay, the car drives. Let's see how it looks in the perspective view. As you can see, the car tilts too much into the corner. For our animation, a bit of rolling was pretty appreciated, but that's obviously too much. So the suspension needs some more work. Most of the parameters can only be edited at time zero. So we need to rewind the animation. Increasing the stiffness of the anti-roll bar springs should reduce the rolling of the chassis in the corners. So let's make another try. looks better but it's not enough since we have two axles at the rear meaning the double count of springs and dampers it may be a good idea to reduce these values okay let's see Okay, this looks good. If you want your car behave more stable, you have to play around with these values a bit more. As promised, next up is the excursion how to animate the suspension mechanics. This is not required for functionality, it's just a visual effect if you want to make close-ups showing the suspension working. The simulation manages two suspension objects for each wheel. That are these two crosses here. 
One is attached to the body and the other one is a child of the wheel object. These two objects always point to each other. This makes it quite easy to control the moves of the dampers and springs. I put the upper part of the damper object in the upper suspension object and the lower part in the lower suspension object of the wheel. I really don't know what these objects do so I add it to the wheel object so that they move up and down with the wheel. The axle object is expected to connect both wheels, so we need to add some additional logic. I've grouped the axle objects to a new null and added a target tag. So the axle always points to one of these suspension objects in the wheels. The position is always the midpoint between the two suspension objects. This simple expressor logic adds both positions and divides by 2 to get the middle. Let's see how it's working. Therefore I use this default sample object that is created when creating a ground object. Scale it down so that it only affects one wheel. Uh, make it a bit higher. And move it in front of the wheel. So let me smooth the surface a bit. I want the wheel roll slowly over the obstacle so that we can better see the suspension moving. I think the flat view will show it better. Here you can see the dampers compressing and the moves. I've done the same for the front wheels. As expected, it also works. Okay, there are so nice details of the mechanics that it's fun to also rig the steering. Here we have the tie rod. It's the same logic as the axle uses. I also use a target check to lap a null point to one of the steering arms, where I place the target object. The position is set with the same expressor wiring used for the axle. So let's make a test. Therefore I remove the root so that the car doesn't drive away. And create a command object that tells the car to turn the steering wheel. from right to left within 4 seconds. Ok, let's take a look. The 
it's working. In the next part we'll rig the trailer using Cinema 4D Dynamics and connect it to the truck.